In our last video, we have walked through Direct Console User Interface or DCUI interface of our ESXi server. We have discussed about various network configurations like setting up IP, DNS server, VLAN, etc. for management network connectivity of our ESXi server. Now in this video, we will be walking through a same DCUI interface of our ESXi server, but we'll be discussing about configuring various other options, other parameters like setting up root user password, enabling ESXi shell for troubleshooting, logs monitoring, etc. So let's get started. Now if you, if you look at the screen, this is our ESXi host, esx-01a.bmlab.local and this is what is our DCUI interface. Now, just press F2 key to interact, to log into a DCUI interface. It will prompt you for root user password. So give a root user password. Now the first option what we have is configure password. So uh, with this option, we can go and we can reset the root user password. So if you want to reset the root user password, click enter. Now give your old user, old password, whatever you have it. And now you can define your new password. And now your password is set. Configure management network, restart management network, test management network, network restore options, all these options, all these options we have already discussed in our previous video. So let's move to the next one. Configure keyboard. So if you want to change the layout of your keyboard, you can select this option, press enter. So since we will go with the default one, so let's escape, press escape. Troubleshooting options. This option is one of the important parameter to configure because it will, we always use this, this troubleshooting options for doing any kind of troubleshooting at the ESXi host level. So it is very important to configure. Press enter to go into the troubleshooting options. And now once you press enter, you could see there are a couple of other options available. So let's look at each of the one, each of the options one by one. Now the first one is enable ESXi shell. Like as I mentioned earlier, ESXi kernel is a Unix based kernel, right? And every Unix based kernel will have some shell interface or which we call administrative interface through which you can interact with your kernel. You can, you can fire any of the command to fetch the output of any of the uh, information, like you want to get the information about network configuration, you want to get the information about storage configuration of that host. So that's where you log into the shell of that operating system and you execute commands there. So that's what your ESXi shell is all about. So current by default, when you do the ESXi installation, the ESXi shell is disabled, as you can see here. Now, how do you get access to ESXi shell from the DCUI interface? Just press Alt F1. Now, when you press Alt F1, you will get prompt to this window or this screen. Now, if you give any of the user input, it will not take it. I'm giving user keyboard input. It is not taking at all. Now, press Alt F2 to get to that mode. And now, why it is not taking any input? Because it is in a disable state so press enter key to enable it now if you see the state has been changed now the esxi shell is enabled now now again go to alt f1 and now you could see it is asking you for the login prompt which was not coming earlier when it esxi shell was disabled so press enter give root user password and now we are logged into our esxi shell it is an administrative interface and which is used for doing any kind of troubleshooting at the ESXi host level. Now there you can fire any of the command, for example, ESXCFG nix-l, and this command will give you the overall information about your network adapter information. Right, so there's a lot of commands out there which you can execute from this interface. Now let's go back to the previous screen. To go back to the previous screen, press Alt F2. Now, second option, enable SSH. So if you want to connect 
to VMware ESXi shell remotely, not directly from the DCUI interface or console interface, you can always do it do it by enabling as such service on your ESXi host. So let's say in our Windows system, from this Windows system, I want to connect to my ESXi shell. Right, so how would you do that? So we, we use an application called Putty. So click on Putty and give an IP of your ESXi host. Now if you see, at this by default, it is not allowing us to connect to our ESXi host because the SSH service on our ESXi host is disabled. If you could see it here, right? So first, we need to enable the service. How do we do that? Press enter key. And if you see your SSH service is enabled. Now let's go back to our putty session again. And let's restart, restart it. Now, if you restart it now, it's asking you for the credentials. And now I am I have connected to the ESXi shell or administrative interface. Right? The only difference between the ESXi shell, what we just what we saw earlier, this shell options. And this, the only difference is basically in previous option, we need to have a console access of your ESXi host. Either you should locally go to your server, connect to the monitor, and then get access to this DCI console, or use some ID rack or ILO interface to connect to a DCI interface. But with this putty application, or after enabling access service, remotely you can connect to your Unix environment, remotely you can connect to your ESXi host and access it from there itself. So if I run the same command, you would be seeing the same output. Now let's go back to the previous screen. Alt F2. Now the third option is modify DCUI ideal timeouts. So what does that mean? With this option, you can set the ideal timeout for DCUI access. Let's say you are not doing any kind of activity for more than 10 minutes on your DCUI interface. Your user will be by default logged out. Right, so this option you can set the time when you you want to be expired this particular session. Now, if you if you press if you enter value zero, that means the idle timeout you have disabled for your DCI interface, so user will never be logged out. Now, the last one is restart management agents. Now, restart management agents is the programs that allow remote management software to monitor and control this host. Okay, restarting management agents will disconnect all your remote management software and it, and it will try to restart all of your management agents like HostD, VPXA. These are, the these are the agents which are running on your ESXi host. And sometimes what happens is basically, when you're trying to connect to your ESXi host and you're not able to connect to ESXi host, that could be a reason where your host is not responding of that kernel or your VPX agent is not responding because of that you're not able to add that host to your vCenter server. In those scenarios, this is one of the troubleshooting step where you can go to your ESXi host direct console user interface and you can restart those management agents. So what this service will do, it will stop all the management agents which are running in the kernel and it will again retry to restart them. Try to again restart them and we'll try to recover from that issue now the next one is view system logs so if you look at the right hand side there we have options press 1 for system log press 2 for kernel logs press 3 for configuration information press 4 for management agent like as i mentioned your host the agent press 5 for your virtual center virtual center agent vpx agent logs and press 6 for your vobd log observation log so if i press 1 you could see these are the logs, right? And these are your system logs. So you just press space key and you can scroll down from that logs. If you want to come out from that screen, just press Q. Press two. These are your VM kernel logs. Just press space key to browse through the logs. Again, press Q from coming out of it. Let's say I want to look at my host day logs. So press four. And this is showing your host D logs. Press escape space key to scroll down and press Q for quit. So this is so you could have a, a view of your system logs or kernel logs from the DCI console itself. 
give support information. In support information, it will be giving you information like if you could see it showing a serial number, licensing, and all that stuff. And then we have a reset system configuration. Reset system configuration will actually reset all of your uh, system configuration and it will bring your system back to your factory default settings. So the in networking section, the network restore option was just restoring your network configurations. But this reset system configuration will reset all the system wide configurations. And it will bring your system to your default state. So that's what DCUI interface is all about. And, uh, and that's what the options or parameters you can configure it from this DCUI interface. Thank you guys for watching it.